Hallelujah. Good and blessed morning. Who can claim that I am forgiven? Amen, church. I am forgiven. Are you forgiven, church? Hallelujah. We are forgiven. Wow. I press and thanks the Lord for the lives of all the children that he have, he have used to usher the church, usher his people in the presence of the Lord this morning. And thank you so much, parents, for allowing the lives of your children to be used in the ministry. And we just give the Lord all glory and honor. Amen? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, Lord, truly indeed, O God, that apart from you, we cannot do anything. Truly indeed, Father God, that with your empowerment, with your company, O Lord God, even as young as these children, Lord, you can use them, Father God, to usher us in your presence. And we thank you so much exactly for that, Lord, that we have encountered you, that we we experience you this morning. Thank you, Lord, that we were embraced, Father God, at the foot of that cross once again this morning. And thank you, Lord, that having been forgiven, having been continuously embraced, oh God, thank you so much because we have that joy, we have that victory to continue. You are not finished yet, Father God. So, Lord, even as we study your words, Father God, we pray that you bless and sanctify these words, Father God, that it may give nourishment for the physical body, for our spiritual body. I mean, thank you so much, Father God, that these words will quicken our spirit, Father. Lord, to all the people gathered here today as well as to the people gathering online, we thank you so much, Father God, with excitement, Lord, with expectancy in our heart. We know and we do believe that we will not just hear a sound and good message from you, but that message that will transform us, that message that will transform our lives, that message that will transform our church, Father God. Holy Spirit, be our teacher. Come and lead us, come and guide us. Holy Spirit, enlighten the minds of your people open their hearts, open their spiritual senses to receive the message that comes from you today. Holy Spirit, cover me, hide me, stand in front of me so that none of me, none of this flesh, none of this corruptible being will manifest but just you, O God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, church, we are in the season of revival. Amen. We are in the season of revival. And that is my prayer. That is my prayer. That is my cry. And I exhort people. I encourage people to join in that cry. To join in that prayer. To desire on that revival. To desire on that cry. Wow. Brother Carl prophesied. We were provoked, we were challenged to really consider what we are doing. That was our very message last Sunday. Are we serious? Are we really serious in our desire to come to the Lord? Are we really serious? in our faith, in, in our walk with the Lord. So please, let us all in one spirit join to pray and to cry for a revival. Amen, church? Are we in agreement? There is going to be a revival in this church. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. There is going to be a revival in this church. Why don't we declare that? Amen? Amen? There is going to be a revival in your family. There is going to be a revival in the community that you live in. There is going to be a revival in your workplaces. There is going to be a revival in this land, UK. 
Though we're, there's going to be a revival in our beloved Philippines, do we believe that? In spite after this pandemic, there is gonna be revival in the Americas. And there is gonna be a revival in Ukraine. Amen, church. There is gonna be a revival in Israel. Amen. There is going to be a revival in the seven continents of the world. But let that revival, the saith the Lord, starts with me. That revival starts in our heart, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. That revival starts in our heart. That revival start. Are you comfortable there, Atilet? Huh? That revival, my dear brothers and sisters, starts with our individual life. Amen. I have a word. Do you want me to share it or wag na lang? You know, when Carl was standing here and prophesying, there is that conviction that came to my heart. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, that conviction is this church is exploding, this church is filled with gifts, talents, operations. The Lord, hindi po nagkulang ang Panginoon na mag-provide ng gift, talent, and skills to all of you sitting there right now. You know kung saan tayo nagkukulang? That desire that commitment, that seriousness. You might feel bad about me. You might hate me. I cannot control that. But if I'm not going to share that, then I am liable to the one who put impress that burden on me. My dear brothers and sisters. Church, are we expectant for that revival? Are we truly desiring for that revival? Are we really hungry and thirsty for that revival? The Lord is true. The Lord is right. Amen. See? The Lord is true. The Lord is right. Those silence means we are not expectant enough. Those silence means we are not desiring enough. Those silence means we are not hungry enough. We are not thirsty enough. And the message last Sunday was complimented by Brother Carl here today. is challenging us, provoking us to think, are we really serious in our faith in the Lord? Are we really serious in our faith in the Lord? Any zero to ten years olds in here? Anyone? Zep, raise your hands. Any zero to ten years old in here? Any eleven to twenty years in here? Anyone? Raise your hands higher. Eleven to twenty years. Any twenty, thirty, and forties in here? Anyone? Raise your hands. Twenties. 30s and 40s? Any 50s, 60s, and 70s? <laughs> My dear brothers and sisters, there is going to be a revival in all ages. Amen. Amen. Sa ang bracket ka man nagtas doon, mga kapatid, my prayer is, there is going to be a revival for you. Amen. Amen. There is going to be a revival for you, my dear brothers and sisters. The first recorded revival in Christian history happens during the time of Acts. Amen? In Acts chapter 2, that is the first recorded revival in Christian history. 
In particularly, my dear brothers and sisters, in verses 16 to 18, remember when the Holy Spirit came to all the believers, at least 2,000 of them, my dear brothers and sisters. How many of us in here in this room? Around 50? Less than? My dear brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit was able to empower and revive 2,000, at least 2,000 believers during that time. Mani mani lang po that He can turn a revival in this room today. And when people around said that, what is happening to you guys? You seems like a drunk people. And Apostle Peter stood up and said in verse 16 and 18, Apostle Peter said that this is what spoken through the prophet Joel. In Joel chapter 2 verses 28 and 29, it says in there, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Amen? Are we living on the last days? Church, are we living in the last days? So the time is now. The moment is ripe. This time is that what foretold revival, my dear brothers and sisters. The prophet Joel said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit in all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even in my men servants and mid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy, thus saith the Lord. Amen, church. So according to Prophet Joel, he was prophesying and he mentioned four categories of people that were to experience revival in those last days. And who are those people? Anyone? Shout out. Who are those people? Your sons and daughters, they will prophesy. Your young man will see vision. The old man will dream dreams. And to my men servants and maid servants, they will prophesy, saith the Lord. It is very surprising, my dear brothers and sisters. No, I did not put this together. This is the word of the Lord. And it's very surprising that the first time that the word revive occurred in the Bible, revive is the root word for revival. Thank you. Revive is the root word for revival. And the word revive happened for the first time in the Bible in Genesis chapter 45. And it is connected to Joel's prophecy. To an old man called Jacob, my dear brothers and sisters. In Jacob, in chapter, in Genesis 4, 5, we know the story of Jacob. Do we? Do we know the story of Jacob? Jacob, like Carl said, he wrestled with God. And because him... Persevering by wrestling with God, God changed his name to Israel. And Jacob has a sons. Jacob has 12 sons. And this Jacob 12 sons became the 12 tribes of Israel that we know today. Amen, church. And we know that who is the favorite son of Jacob? Anyone? 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 Joseph. Jacob's favorite son is Joseph. And Joseph is called the 
dreamer. Amen. Because somewhat, Joseph had many dreams and they all came to pass. People will have dreams and Joseph will be able to interpret them. And we know, my dear brothers and sisters, what happened to Joseph? What happened to Joseph? He was sold by his brothers in slavery in Egypt. And when they sold Joseph, what did they do? Ano yung pinalabas nila? That Joseph is dead. He even, he, they even took the cloak, the nice coat, furry, cor, furry coat that Jacob gave to his favorite son. And they apply a blood in there. And they said that, Father, Dad, your favorite son is dead. As an evidence, here is his cloak. So my dear brothers and sisters, here, we can see that there is an old man by the name of Jacob who has lost his most beloved son by the name of Joseph. And Joseph is the dreamer. And he was made to believe by his sons that their brother Joseph was dead. And forever gone, Jacob thought in his mind. He thought in his dreams that, I mean, he thought that his son, the dreamer, is forever dead. He thought that he will never see Joseph again. In Genesis chapter 37, verses 34-35, it says in the air that jo uh, Jacob was grieving. Even the remaining children came to comfort him. But Joseph, uh, Jacob said, I cannot be comforted. I cannot be comforted. I'd rather die as well to be with my son. Here we can see an old man, my dear brothers and sisters, who lost a dream. Here we can see, my dear brothers and sisters, an old man who lost a dream. And sometimes it feels like our hope, our dream, our passion has also been extinguished. Sometimes our passion has died down. And sometimes everything, it seems that everything is coming against us. That nothing is ever right in everything that is happening around us. If it ever occur in that to you, that's what happened to Jacob. Ganun po yung nangyari kay Jacob, my dear brothers and sisters. That's what happened to Jacob. Amen. Jacob felt within him that his son Joseph is dead. But in Genesis chapter 45, verse beginning from verse 26, my dear brothers and sisters, all the while that Jacob thought that his son Joseph is dead, in verse 26 it says in there, he's actually alive in Egypt and has been promoted to become a governor, and has been blessed by God. Amen. And here comes to pass that the brother of Joseph, before they, they went to Egypt and they met Joseph, and now they were returning to Israel to tell the news to their father. And it says in there in verse 26, and they told him, Father, your beloved son Joseph is still alive. Your son, the dreamer, is still alive. And he is the ruler over all the land of G Egypt. And Jacob's hearts became numb, for he did not believe them. But when they told him the words of Joseph, hindi pa rin siya naniniwala. When they told him about the word of Joseph, he still does not believe. But pay attention. 
when he saw the wagons coming. When he saw the wagons coming. Can we declare by faith? Wagons. When he saw the wagons coming, the wagon that Joseph has sent to carry him, the Bible said, the spirit of Jacob was revived. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. An old man got revived in his dreams. An old man experienced revival. His dreams came alive. Amen. His want to live. Because he said, I'd rather die. So he did not have the desire to live. But his wants to live, his desire to live, his passion, his unction from God came back at, at an old age. Amen. Which just exactly lines up with the prophecy of Joel. That your old man will dream dreams. Jacob thought that his dreams has been gone away. But now we can see an old man, Jacob, had his dreams back. And he was revived, it says in there. My dear brothers and sisters. Amen. Hello, church. The first reference of revival, the first reference of the word revive happens to an old man called Jacob. So my dear brothers and sisters, if this church is to have a revival, it is not going to start to a new convert. It is not going to start to a someone that just is going to be saved. It's going to start with the old men. Old men. Old men who praise. Old men who battle. Old men who encounter the challenges of life day by day and yet persevered. Amen, church. Hallelujah. If the Lord is to give a revival in this church, it's going to start with the elders of the church. You don't have to be old to be an elder. You don't have to have a gray hair to be an elder. Amen, church. Hello. I feel like I'm having the conviction to prophesy to our older generations. If you are on your 50s, if you are on your 60s, if you are in your 70s and above, my dear brothers and sisters, to all the elders of the church, the Spirit of God will give back your dreams. The wagons that represent the Spirit of God is coming. And he's gonna give you dreams, my dear brothers and sisters. The Spirit of God will revive back your dreams. The Spirit of God will revive back your desire in God. Will revive back your love in God. Will revive back your passion in serving God. Will revive back your commitment in service to God. This is how I used to serve the Lord before. But now, this is me, my dear brothers and sisters. The Lord is going to restore back your dreams. The Lord is going to give back your dreams. The wagons are coming and God is sending His wagon. His Holy Spirit is coming. My dear brothers and sisters, it is about time, it is about time that the Lord will give you back your dreams. Amen, church? This time, it is going to be about His time. Amen? It is not going to be about our own preferred times. 
It is not about what you think that the Holy Spirit should move by this time. That the church should grow by this time. It is about His time, my dear brothers and sisters. It is about His time. And if we are desiring enough, if we are committed enough, this time is going to be God's time. Amen, church? People who are, who are under 50s, 60s, 70s, even if you just joined the church in the last two years, church elders, revival going to start in you. Revival is going to start in you. Amen, church? Revival will start when you allow God to revive your dreams. Revival will start when you allow God to revive your passions. When you start to allow God to revive your unctions, your gifts, talents, skills that He has given you. It is about His time, my dear brothers and sisters. And it's not about our time. Amen? In Acts chapter 7, it says that Moses was 8 years old when God says, Moses, it's about my time. I am sending you to Pharaoh to deliver my people in Egypt. It's probably about Moses' time. Moses probably would prefer when he was on his 30s, when he was on his 40s, he was on his prime. But God said, now that you are on your 80s, it is about time. Amen, church. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter 14. Caleb was 85 years old when he said, give me this mountain that the Lord has given me as an inheritance. And guess what? At the age of 85, Caleb defeated every giant living in that mountain. It is about God's time and not our time. And old men, people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, it is about God's time. It is about God's time. Stand up and receive those dreams back. Let the Lord revive those dreams. Let the Lord revive those passion. Let the Lord revive those unctions in Him. Amen, church. 50s, 60s, 70s and above. And to the elders of the church. Let's pray. Psalms 90, 12. Teach me to number my days that I may gain wisdom from you. Let us pray Proverbs 3, 5. Teach me to trust in you, Lord, with all my heart that I will not lean on my own understanding. Hallelujah. So once again, if you are 50s, 60s, and 70s and above, let's prophesy. Can I invite you to raise your hands and to the elders of the church? And let's corporately declare this prophecy that, Lord, the rest of my years are the best of my years. I am a part of revival. God is not true with me. God is not finished with me. I am yet to experience the best days of my life and serving the Lord. I am still part of God's plan. I'm still part of that Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, thus saith God. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Do it with me, Lord. I see the wagons coming, Lord, in Jesus' name. 
Wow, great days are coming. Joel said, when revival comes in the last days, those people who raise their hands will dream dreams. Amen? Joel also says that your young men will see visions. People in their 20s, men and women in their 30s, people in their 40s, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord said, you will see visions. Amen, church. Hallelujah. The second time that the word revival is found in the Bible is connected again to Joel's prophecy. To a young man called Samson. In Judges chapter 15, verses 14 to 19. So the summary of the story, my dear brothers and sisters, is Samson is a young man who has a great strength who has a great power, who has a great anointing. But my dear brothers and sisters, no one can defeat Samson. We know the story of Samson growing up, yeah? yeah? We know the story of Samson growing up in the Bible study. And we know that no one can empower Samson. But my dear brothers and sisters, it was Samson's own family who surrendered him over to the enemy, to the Philistines. And sometimes, my dear brothers and sisters, just to give a quick overview of what's happening. Samson fell in love with a Philistinian woman. Hindi pa dun. Hindi pa dun. Atras tayo ng konti. Samson was fell in love with a Philistinian woman. And he came to his parents and said, Mom, Dad, arrange a marriage for me with this Philistinian woman. And his parents was against it. And they said that, can you not find someone within Israel? And Samson said, no. I love this woman. So they went on, my dear brothers and sisters. They went on to arrange the marriage. The marriage was agreed. And uh, when Samson is returning to the land of Philistine with his mom and his dad, a lion attacked them. A lion attacked them, but Samson defeated the lion. Samson defeated the lion. He held the jaw and he held the, ma the mandible of the, li the lion and uh, he just stared the lion up. And the lion died. And the parents did not knew nothing about that. And in their, Because you know in Israel, if you want to marry someone, it takes quite long days of going and returning. That's why you know the, the parable of the um, the virgins that they need to be waiting constantly. Amen? So after some time, Samson and his parents return to um, uh, Philistine and they pass by to this place where he killed the lion. Amen, church? And when he looked at the carcass of the lion, he saw that there is a honey in there. Honey. And he took some of the honey and he ate it. And his parents saw and oh, you have a baon, you have a honey, give us some as well. So he gave them the honey without them, without Samson telling that it came from the carcass of the dead lion. Amen. So they went on to the wedding, they went on to the wedding. And on the night of the wedding, Samson challenged the Philistine and said that, I have a riddle. Meron akong bugtong-bugtong. Sa Ilocano, meron akong burbur -bur Amen. I have a riddle. I have uh, um, uh, I have uh, a bugtong bugtong. It says in there. Amen. And sabi ni Samson, out of the eater, something to eat. Out of the strong, something sweet. So no one, um, no, he said that if you can answer that, give me some amount, give me some wealth, something like that. But if you can answer it, I will give you some wealth, the same amount. So the people of Philistine cannot answer that riddle. They give them seven days. No one can answer the riddle. And then they pressure the wife of Samson. You, 
you, they pressured the, life, the wife of Samson and said that you pressure Samson. So he went to Samson and said, oh, hindi mo na ako mahal. Kasi kung mahal mo ako, sasabihin mo yung sagot. Sige na, sikreto lang naman natin. Kailang kaya nangyari yun, di ba? Sige na, sabihin mo sa akin, tayong dalawa lang naman. But before you know it, the whole community knew it already. Amen. So ganun po yung nangyari. Sinabi niya, and then the, uh, this woman went to the Philistine and he shared the answer to that. So nasagot po nila yung sagot na yun. Amen. So Samson, obviously, para siya, para mabigay niya yung kayamanan, Samson went away and because of his anger, he killed 30 Philistine. Kinuha niya yung kanilang ari-arian and yun yung pinambayad niya. Saying, if you did not deceive my wife, hindi niyo masasagot yung, uh, yung riddle. Because the riddle is the lion in the, um, uh, the honey. And what happened is dahil doon nagalit yung manugang ni Samson, ibinigay niya yung asawa ni Samson sa iba. And Samson, nagalit siya. So Samson burned the whole Philistine. Uh, burn a community. So ngayon, a lot of Philistine community, 1,000 of them, came to the village of Samson, ready to wage war. So ngayon, the people, the family of Samson said, Samson, what have you done for us? Spare us this war. Sumuku ka. So it was Samson's family who surrendered Samson, my dear brothers and sisters. With this Samson who is strong, it was his family who surrendered him. Amen? So, ganun din po yung nangyayari sa atin, mga kapatid. That sometimes it is your own family and it is our own family that can successfully bind us. Nobody else could bind Samson but his own family. Amen? His own family deliver him to the Philistine. And sometimes... People who are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s. It is your own family issues that bind you up and causes you to be restricted and limited in giving that full-pledged commitment and serving the Lord, mga kapatid. But I pray that this will happen to you. Because Samson, when he was bound, the Spirit of God came to Samson. And yung tali na pinangtali sa kanya, mga kapatid, parang naging straw lang. Alam niyo yung straw? Yung tali na pinangtali sa kanya, he was easily, he easily broke that chain. He easily broke, mga kapatid, yung tali na yan. And the Bible said, he found a fresh jaw of a donkey. Alam niyo yung panga ng donkey? Samson found a fresh jaw of the donkey and he fought the 1,000 Philistine. And Samson fought them, fought them, fight with them, fight with them with that jaw of a donkey. And the Bible says, my dear brothers and sisters, that when Samson was able to finally kill the last Philistine, the Bible says, his spirit left him. He was empowered by the Spirit of God. But when he fought, he fought, he fought. When he finally killed the last Philistine, the Bible said, his, the Spirit has left him. He was so worn out. Pagod na pagod po siya. He was so fatigued. He was so weary from the fight, my dear brothers and sisters. And sometimes, young men and women, Sometimes we do a lot of fighting. Fighting for our sin, fighting for our family, fighting for our relationship, fighting for the future of our children, fighting for our career, fighting for the extended provision of family back home, fighting for those business, fighting for that dream house, fighting for that dream car, fighting for that loan. Fighting for that credit card. All things that we are fighting. All things that we are doing to make our schedules busy. 
my dear brothers and sisters. People who stand here in front, why do you think that you just come here and play music and sing songs? You just come here and exhort? Like Carl said, our battle is not against flesh and blood. And in the spirit, everyone who come to stand here in front is engaged in a spiritual battle, my dear brothers and sisters. And sometimes that's what we do. We come here every Sunday, nagagamit tayo, fighting, fighting, fighting. Do you know that if you fight spiritually, you get tired and exhausted spiritually as well? Amen, church? Hallelujah. But what happened to Samson is that no enemy can defeat him from outside. No flesh can defeat him. But he was defeated from inside, mga kapatid. The fact that he ran out of that inside strength. And that's what happened many times. Hindi naman ako nagkakasala. Wala naman akong ginagawang mali. But why is it that parang kong nanghihina? Because you minister, you come and stand every weekend, every Friday as well, and you are not being replenished. So you are being exhausted. You are being tired spiritually, mga kapatid. Hallelujah. But that's the time in verse 19, that's the time that God came to Samson and showed him a fresh water. And when Samson drank, the Bible says, his strength returned and he revived. Hallelujah, my dear brothers and sisters. Young men in their 20s, 30s, 40s, young men, young women. The devil wants to exhaust you in going from battle to battle to battle. Remember, the role of the enemy is to kill, to steal, and to destroy that vision. But what you need is come to the Lord and get that revival. Amen. Come to the Lord and let the Lord revive those vision. Matthew 11, 28 says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. John 7, 37, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. For whoever believes in me, as the scripture said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Amen, church? Let's prophesy anyone in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, lift up your hands. Young men, young women, hallelujah, thus saith the Lord. Be replenished with the living water that comes from the Lord. Let the Lord revive those vision. Lord, revive my vision. Amen, church. Joel said, when God pour out His Spirit, He will pour out in our sons and our daughters. Again, this is connected on the third time that the word revive was used in the Bible. When the third time that the word revive was used in the Bible, it talks about a son that was raised from the dead. And it said that when the servant of God prayed for the child, 1 Kings 17, 22. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah and the life of the child came to him again and he revived. Hallelujah. Joel said in the last days, God will pour out his spirit on our sons and daughters. Amen, church. 
dito po nakikita natin that even the children are being filled with the Holy Spirit. That even the children are experiencing the power of God. The teenagers, the college students, people in their juniors, people who are in their high school, the university student, the adolescents, the children are receiving, the children are falling in love with God, the children are being captured by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church? Are we not blessed this morning how the Lord used the children to prophesy to us? Amen, church? Singing is a form of prophetic. Dahil naiintindihan natin yung word, di ba? We are forgiven. That is a prophecy. That is a prophetic declaration. And are we not blessed that those children were in a position to prophesy to us this morning? Carl stood here and exhort the giving. Are we not blessed that these children are prophesying in the fulfillment of that revival in the latter age according to the prophet Joel? To be honest, I was so blessed last Sunday that the Lord allowed me to gather the four boys next door and just witness to them and we we talk about we talk about um, uh, repentance we talk about salvation and we talk about baptism and it was their own decision when the question asked it was their own decision to say that yes they want to receive the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior amen Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge the state of their heart? Does not the Lord says that do not hinder these children in coming to me? Amen. And I reported that. I shared that to their parents. I was so blessed. Amen, church. That they have made their personal decision in accepting the Lord as their Savior. These sons and daughters leading us in praise and worship today. Those children who stood here and used by the Lord today, and those children who are still seated in there that did not come, those, all those children that were prayed here today, my dear brothers and sisters, that is only the beginning of a lifelong calling and journey with the Lord in faith. Amen? Hallelujah. All the children, raise your hands. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is nothing like being filled with the Holy Spirit. There is no party that the world can offer that can compare to the infilling and the power of the Holy Spirit that will come to you. Amen. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, children. There is no vices. There is no popularity. There is no depression even. There is no form of pressure. There is no form of bullying. There is nothing that this world can offer to even compare to what it is like when the Spirit of God comes and begins to fill you. Why don't you declare that to your children, parents who are in the house right now? Children, you have a call in your life. Children, you are here for a purpose. You are here for a divine calling and purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Lastly, when the Lord will pour out His Spirit, it will be to His men servants and maid servants. So if you are in the age of 0 to 10, 11 to 20, in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s and above, there is going to be a revival in all ages. We are all servants of the Most High God. Acts 1.8, it says in there, 
you will receive power when revival comes. You will receive power when those wagon comes. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Are you ready to witness to your friends? Are you ready to witness to your family? Are you ready to witness to your colleagues in your workplaces? Are you ready to witness in your community? Because the word of God is true. The Lord will make sure that His word will pass by. The Lord will make sure that His word will happen. Amen. Do you believe that there is going to be a revival in these latter end days? Yes. Amen. No question about that. No question about that. The question is, will you be a partaker of that revival? Will you be a partaker of that revival? Yes. Amen, church? Amen. Do you have a part on that revival? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you say amen to that, what we need is the Holy Spirit. What we need is the anointing of God in our life. He has promised us that I am going to revive a generation. I am going to pour out my spirit in all people. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men and women will see visions. Your children shall prophesy. My Holy Spirit will come upon all flesh. And I am gonna use you. And you're gonna know what life is. And life more abundantly in the Lord. Amen, church. Church, be revived. People of God, be revived. People of God, be hungry. And be thirsty on that revival. People of God, be committed on that revival. Can we welcome the music? Hallelujah. As it is our first Sunday today, we are going to be observing our communion. And um, we want to welcome the ushers as well. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As it is our first Sunday of the month, we'll be observing communion. Hallelujah. Let us prepare ourselves. Let us ready ourselves to prepare the Lord. The wagons are coming. The Spirit of God is coming. And I pray and I believe by faith that as we are going to have a communion today, the only way that Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. I prophesy and I pray for the life of all ages that as we receive that body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we commune one with the Lord again today, that may the Holy Spirit of God in us be renewed, be refreshed, be empowered, that will manifested outwardly as increase in our commitment, increase in our desire, increase in our seriousness in coming to the Lord. Let us pray for our ushers and for this element. Most gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, 
Lord, we bring to you your servants, our dear sisters Grace and Sister Annie. Thank you so much, Father, for using them today as your ushers. Give them a clean heart. Give them a pure spirit. Cleanse their hands, O God, for the very purpose that you have called them for today. Cause it, Lord, that as we receive these elements from them, it's as if we are receiving them directly from you. Father, sanctify this drink that represents your blood and this bread that symbolizes your body. Sanctify them, cleanse them in the raw form, Father God. May it be used, Lord, according to as you have mandated for us to use today. Lord, cause it that as we partake of it, Lord, it will truly manifest remembering, Father God, your hardship. Remember, Jesus, your sacrifices, your death and resurrection. Remembering the salvation and the forgiveness that we receive at that foot of the cross. In Jesus' name. The word of the Lord says that whoever eats the bread or drink the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Therefore, a man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drink the cup of the Lord. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. As the music team, Encourage us all. Our life to the Lord. Let us give an all account. Let us all up according to the children and say, Lord, forgive me. Ready me. sing for you alone have rescued this life Jesus you have set me free you alone took away all sin and disgrace when you gave your life to ransom me I will sing for you alone, have rescued this life. Jesus, you have set me free. You alone took away all sin and disgrace when you gave your life to ransom me. foot of the cross I am accepted by the power of your love my every stain is washed away I am forgiven here I stand Is washed away. I am for. 
Thank you, Lord, that we are forgiven. Thank you, Father, that the power of the cross is fully manifested in us, O oh God. Let us raise the bread. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread. Let's lift up the cup. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Let's gladly take the cup. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, church. Prophesy. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your death on the cross. Thank you that I am forgiven, Father God. Thank you, Lord, that the power and the complete power of resurrection is being manifested in me. Hallelujah.